Sunday the 19th of November and uh, what a miserable day again raining haven't we had a this autumn haven't we had a lot of rain uh, the main pond the fish are hopping around here is my bit of a viewing point which is nice to see you know not if you're nice to have if you have a covered pond definitely have an area that you can inspect the fish um, and the temperature in this one on the ink bird is if I can see 10 degrees exactly 10 degrees exactly and I can see the fish through there so I know they're okay I know they're active and the shower is now off and going dry and so is the bog filter or the plant filter so uh, I'm going to grab my coffee because I've not been down not been down to see the indoor grow um, Christmas tree, real Christmas tree is there in prep and there uh, we can have a quick look I don't want to go on the grass that much oh it's windy as well today Aces have now dropped all the leaves this is basically just running on um, rainwater. So what I will do in spring or whenever, I will see the sediment in the bottom of this. I'll get my hoover out, pond hoover, and it will get a good suction in to get any settlement. And then it will get filled back up again in spring and these plants will just keep ticking over with the rain, so on and so forth. So uh, I don't know whether it's, uh, I seem pretty much obsessed with LED lights at the minute. I've actually purchased three more. Two similar shape to a phone, but bigger, about nine inch. And I've got a PIR and the back of it, of the light, is a solar. And then this one, which I'm going to show you now, which I've got to say is fabulous. Up there, look, on my greenhouse this autumn flowering cherry is in flower which is just helps to see things living and still growing um, but yeah I fitted this the other day and it's solar panel there's actually three lights and one PIO on the front it comes with a remote and then you just clip in you can have the actual solar panel it's got quite a bit of cable so you can actually have that somewhere else if you've got this um, somewhere in fact just it's just um, made me think actually you could actually have this in the garden because these panels these two on the side point in different directions so you could have this in a garden and have them lighting up different parts of the garden or a tree or a, you know you know you, you you get the picture and then put the solar panel which slides in there or you can have the solar panel remotely and this comes quite a lot of lead probably i think there's a couple, good couple of meters on there so anyway that's doing well and we go in the grow on pond the bees aren't out today come in here you'll see a remote in there and there's different modes so you can have it coming on um, coming on with a sensor and going off coming on and stopping on and coming on and going dim and there's also a flash mode on it like an auto you know a um, emergency just flashing I suppose I don't know why I'd use that but if you're having a party or something I suppose it might be a bit of a gimmick and here's the indoor pond the 5k doing absolutely great still uh, temperature in this is 1.1 the minimums have been 8.8 .8. now the 8.8 .8 minimum was a good week ago i since tweak these up a little bit so at the moment it's on 12 degrees so i'm hoping if i've got me that um heater and that heater set right it's off at the moment but it should hopefully maintain the temperature it is now and I'm going to try and hold that. I would like to push it up to about 12 if I could, but I'm, I'll be happy at holding this temperature. And then the koi, 
Well, what, what can we say? There's dog two goldfish are in there still. I've got the arc to remove them. But um, yeah, they're doing well. I'm pleased. This one is probably the best quality koi I've got because it's got a good body shape and its its patterns are really tight. So the kiwa, the kiwa, and the sashi are really good. The sashi is no more than a scale, and it's quite tight, and uh, yeah, it's doing well. Um, there's still quite a bit of condensation behind these, but I suppose what it is doing is it's when the water there is water dropping. Look, and I've got droplets within that, which is not great but I've not managed to really seal the ends as you can see I'll show you behind there it's quite awkward to uh, drop that one it's quite awkward to seal because obviously you really want it to be airtight now I could cut could cut that and then pin that to that bit of timber there which would obviously help because it would be less of a gap but I've noticed since up in the temperature a little bit to 10 11 degrees and it's coming up just slightly above 10 yeah 12 degrees in here I'm not getting the condensation on the side wall as much so I don't know why that is I've also got my new mop and I got a spare one of these heads, so I put the spare head onto my old mop, which I didn't think I'd be able to repair because I didn't think I could get the screws out out of there. Look, and I did manage to get them out. So this is back in working order. And to be honest, this older one is actually better condition, uh, better quality. It seems more sturdy. The handle's more sturdy and it's longer. So pleased with that. So as usual, um, oops, I'm going to get a bit of this food out. To feed the fish. Wait a minute. They are just being hand fed now, as you know, guys, in previous videos. They're still feeding. It is a colour food still. So, like I said in the previous video, once this runs out, I haven't got any koi food left. I have got some koi food left in here, but it is more of a higher protein and it is silkworm pupae, which I fed in summer. So, hopefully I'm gonna save that and give them a really good start in spring when the, when the temperatures get up. Gonna hit them with the rest of that. There's probably a good kilo there. Yeah, so they're still keen on being fed once a day. And looking okay. Happy enough. Now what I what I was gonna focus the video on this for the last 10 minutes is should you clean your filters out in winter? And I think my answer to that is yes. Um, can it be less frequent? Yes, it can. Um, does it want to be less frequent than say once a week? I wouldn't say so. I'd still think you're best to clean your filter out once a week. And that is exactly why I'm in here. So I'm going to do just that with this one. Open that up and then plunge, hold it up for uh, 30 seconds and that is now dumping water. I created, I made that bypass on this, some of them have a second exit with a tap on so you can actually do what I've just done but I actually just put a T-piece on and come down into a waste pipe with a valve on. 
And then what I do, put that down, let it run for a few seconds. Don't forget to turn your tap bag on. And then that will come through there. Nice and clean. There you go. Back on. The This is looking a bit discoloured. And that was down there. That greener one was actually here. Um, so whether that's because this is getting a continual feed of sort of moist nitrogen rich water from this. I don't know, but anyway, I've swapped them over. Or well, whether it's the time and year and the, the temperature of the water, maybe, that's... Well, what, no, that can't be the case, can it? Because that's got water on it. So I don't know, but I do know these do die off. So, um... So, yeah, filters, and then I'm going to also clean this one. I've still got the overflow of the pond disconnected i was thinking actually connecting that back up because what i did a couple of on my last um clean instead of putting the hose pipe straight in um if the water temperature is colder than the pond water then obviously it's going to drop the temperature of your water and if you're heating the pond you don't really want that so i could like i did with this turn it on and that will come out of there, look, and it will top the water back up. This has got an overflow on, so once it reaches a certain level, it'll just overflow. Whereas this haven't got an overflow on, so if I left this tap on here, on this one, and let this fill there, it would overflow inside the greenhouse, in here. And its higher point is there. That's the highest point there, I've noticed. It's quite level all the way around, but that is, sorry, the lowest point. So if this was to get full, that would be where it would tip over and go over the side of the pond into the greenhouse. I don't want that because then that just makes humidity and air higher. So that's why I was thinking of tapping this back up. I don't want water in here because then it's just going to be sat going stagnant. It's not going to be continually running through, is it? So, um, yeah, I might do that now. Just disconnect this screw it's holding it up i've been blowing down that just to keep this clear so i might just put that in there i don't know but you know, in winter there's a little bit of muck in there as you can see so it's nowhere near as much as it was over summer obviously or not summer um the end of summer look at the muck in there it's still quite a bit of muck in there it's collecting but um, it's nowhere near as much as it would be if I was feeding a lot. But that, to say I'm only feeding once a day, is still quite a lot, isn't it? So, on that, the conclusion is, yes, the more often you can dump that out and get that muck solids out of that filter, the better. So like a um, drum, which does it, say you can set it to every half an hour or whatever you've got it to set at it cleans the screen and that goes down a waste chute well with a filter you have to do that manually and if you can do that you can actually get an auto setup on these so it does it automatically but that could simply be you pulling the waste once a day and dragging the muck out but you've got to make sure you've got a good pull on your waste now i know that mine isn't as good because there's not a massive fall due to this being lower than it was here it was on brick blocks quite high on this one the actual gravity makes it empty quicker because obviously the higher the filter if you know all about gravity and water pressure it will put pressure onto the pipe and it just there's more weight because you've got a higher head of water and that pushes it out whereas this is a lot lower look if you look at this my head is hardly anything so i know that outside is probably a foot from there down to the end of the greenhouse the corner which is not massive and i've got a trap outside as well so no with water in it so nothing can come back so yeah so i'm going to what am i doing closing no, oh, sorry, turning the pump off. And uh, this is going to get cleaned out. I'm going to turn this tap off. 
so it can't back come back down there this will fill up hopefully to the more or less the level that i want um but it's going to be a little bit lower turn that off i will top that up with some tap water get a bubbler on It, I could probably just get away with just dropping the actual water to be honest with you because the K1 is a lovely brown colour at the minute but uh, I do it anyway, I'll leave that on for about 10 minutes I do need to top that up with the hose pipe otherwise you not get that vortex it's sort of muck overflowing there's my tap that's now on there's my hose and I'll just, first I'll just do that, give it a bit of a nose down on the top. And I'll just, just fill that now till it gets up. And I will probably measure the incoming water temperature because if that is above 10 degrees well the water in here is 10 degrees anyway so it's not going to be any detriment to adding it straight into the pond but come january february the cold water coming in might be eight degrees so it might drop your temperature down about half a degree or one if you're eating your pond you definitely don't want that do you So that's that, it's got to be above the level of that waste chute to get that clean properly and you'll see the muck come out, you see the muck on the outer chamber already and then what I will do is put some water in here and we'll do a little test shall we of temperature. Let's use this. We'll have a little test of the gun. This has got a compensation for temperature on it. This has. Ten point three. So I think because I've not adjusted the E value at the top. See the E value zero point nine five. I think that should be a. I can go into the settings on here. Oh, hang on. Not that one. Not that one. There. Now it should be on point nine three. So if I do it now. I think it'll be 10.2 law drops the temperature down so that's more accurate now on 0.93 there's a chart in the instructions determining what what your setup is and what you're testing so if it's water it's got to be on 0.93 if it's concrete or a block or wood the value is different again but in water on this device it's got to be 0.93 that's actually saying it's 11.9 No, reset it, look, so I actually did it on the actual, took my uh, finger off the trigger onto the wood. 10. So that's saying it's 10 degrees. It's also handy if you've got a pen like this, that does temperature as well, to have a look what the temp, what that is. on centigrade forty six Fahrenheit can't even see me Ah, 
I don't know how to change the actual temperature to be honest with you Have a look at the destruction. I did know, but so it's about 35 degrees. I'm not impressed with the display on this at all. I'm honest with you. To around about the 10 degrees, so it shouldn't be a problem for me to put that in directly. But like I say, like I say, it's on that cusp of being colder than the water than the pond that's in. If you're heating above that, why go and dump a load of cold water in? I mean, obviously I'd treat it first and remove the chlorine and chloramine. And I'll put it in there. Put the sea chem safe in there and then pour that in first. So, yeah, that's that. What do you do guys? Do you still clean your filters out? Do you leave them longer? I know ponds that are in the garden it might be a lot colder um, but it's still a good idea to clean your filter keep it well maintained and because anything that's sat there is purely decaying now you're only getting away with it because there's not much food going in so it's still good practice to keep it going once a week get in that routine grab a coffee get down there with a the core in your filter that one we're done in a minute. This one takes, because I'm getting the air in, it takes about 10, 15 minutes. And I enjoy the coy in that while I'm in here. And I sometimes do my other bits and bobs, like do a nitrite test or do other tests and stuff. Chest check uh, KH, see if the KH value is, is okay. Things like that. So on that note, Thanks for watching. Can we see these? They're in there. Doing great still. There's not an awful lot going on this time of year, guys. I know a lot of people probably start knocking off videos and stuff like that, but I'm going to try and keep a weekly video going. I'm about caught up with footage now, but I think I'm still a week or so behind, as you, many of you know, hence the last video was about 40 minutes work. So I just wanted to get sort of caught up um, but I have got another video <laughs> that makes sense I've got two videos at the minute two lots of footage that I haven't shown but, um, some secondary Benny on that fin on that one lot which is a demerit so yeah Nearly December, nearly time for the Christmas tree to go up. I've got a week off um, the first week of December. I'm going away for a couple of days and when I come back in the second week of December, no doubt that Christmas tree will be going up and we'll be into the Christmas period. So look after yourselves, look after your koi. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you haven't hit the like button, tap the like and I'll see you on the next one.